<clears throat> wow. The author of this little hundred-year-old book I have in my hand has more than likely been in heaven for many years. I pray that the Lord will put every single possible good thing that comes from his messages out of this book to his account and his mansion that he has built in heaven I'm sure is one of the most beautiful on one of the best streets that there ever was and probably closer to uh, the throne than many others this man knew God personally lived for him personally passed on the personage that he lived to others like myself that I could pass it on to others and life will never be successful unless we learn to let God care for us God has to care for us we are finite human beings and in our own minds we think that we have control when we have no control and uh, to be successful unless we have faith to know that God is our keeper and that hence we have nothing to fear we shall never be the cheer and sunlight in this dark world that God designed us to be we must we must keep our mind on Christ we must keep our thoughts on doing for others and living in a way that others will have no fear from our, the design that God has put in our life. This is a world of trouble. This is a, a world that sin has enveloped many souls in awful midnight gloom. Some may never find Jesus unless they see him smiling in your face. How about that? Every single person you meet has a purpose in life. There's a purpose in life when you meet somebody. Be sure and be an uplifter. Be sure when that person passes by, when he leaves, if he never sees you again, he'll say, you know, I would like to, I'd like to meet that guy again. I would like to talk with him again. I felt something great when I was in his presence and that's what I would like you as God's dear children are to be a light to these those poor people who have no other light who have no real direction in their life who do not know uh, they are begotten souls uh, it's B-E-N-I-G-H-T-E-D uh, Bequeath souls uh, To be such a light You must be full of light Wow I would like to be so full of light That when people meet me They say you know I believe he's a man of God Because the light of God Shines through me And to be full of light You must be full of hope by faith in cheering and encouraging promises of God none can be truly happy none can be cheerful comforters and the conclusion no cheerful and comforters and consolation to the world who are bearing their own burden only those who have learned the sweet lesson of trusting in God and know that he cares for them are truly happy and free and capable of cheering up others man I want to be the cheer up man I want to be the guy that cheers up that soul ah uh, he who he who it is one short life would live as heaven has designed my scatter rays of cheering light from a heart with hope enshrined how about that I got hope enshrined in my heart and I can cheer up those around me 
You say, but what about this or what about that? Wait a minute. What about nothing? What about God? If He's in you and He is the chair upper, nothing's going to unchair it. There are many priceless promises in the Word of God. There is a promise for every need. Every condition. Every circumstance of life. Among these blessed promises, here is one that has brought comfort to many a weary pilgrim on life's way. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 17, in God's Word. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Praise the Lord, amen, and hallelujah. Wow. If this promise does not lift you, fire above all the trials, all of discouragement, all of the weariness of life, it is because you do not believe it, nor understand the fullness of its meaning. Get it out. Get out the book of Peter. Read 1 Peter chapter 5. The whole thing. Get it in your heart. Get it in your life. He cares for you. It is not your neighbor or your friend, but it is you. He cares. And it will come to you. Certainly. You could never cast your cares upon God if you had none. He says, cast your cares upon me. But you have them, and doubtless many of them. The difficulty with many is they do not cast them on God. Render your life will never be. It cannot be. That free, happy, radiant, sunlit, helpful life that pleases God if you bear your own cares. Ooh, Peter, that's me. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. I've kind of through my life thought that I was the sole bearer of, of these things and that I could handle it. But, but without God, you can't handle anything. Without God, it's important. You could never cast your cares upon him if you had none. But you have them, and doubtless many of them. The difficulty with many is, is they do not cast them on God. Render your life will never be. If it cannot be. That free, happy, radiant, sunlit, helpful life that pleases God if you bear your own cares. Man. I know more people that are trying to work their way into being carefree. We can't do it. Only God can do it. Put your cares on Him. He knows how to take care of them. He knows how to make them work. He knows how to handle them. There is nothing too drivel, trivial in life to take to God. There's nothing too trivial in life to take to God. Everything. Take it to God. In the very smallest concern of your daily life, He has an interest in everything that your request be made known to Him. Do learn to take everything to Him. Do learn to take everything to Him. Fret over nothing. Never worry for a moment. Let nothing disturb or disquiet you. I say nothing. Do you know this man is preaching to this boy right now? We are in places in our lives where if we're not careful, we'll try to carry the load. And the load's too heavy. You can't carry this load that's in the world today. God has to carry it. You've got to let Him carry it. And you can't be fretted over it. He careth for you. Do you comprehend the full meaning of these words? Think them over for a moment. Let go of yourself. 
and let God keep you. Oh, the freedom that belongs to the child of God. There is a sweet land of liberty. But alas, how many will go on bearing their own burdens and weighted down with care with these words right before them he careth for you why not let him my friend why not give up today and let him carry your burdens make such a decision today that people around you will say well, what happened to you what happened to you? What happened to that? Yesterday, what was? What happened to all of that? So you know what? I gave it to God. He's carrying it for me. <laughs> I don't have to carry it anymore. He's bigger than I am. He knows exactly how to carry it. And he's carrying it for me. Wow. Care is a grace destroyer. If you would be strong in the grace of God, you must live free from care. It groans at the very vitals of the soul. It gnaws at the very vitals of the soul. A strong cable made of many fine wires was stretched across the river and was used to tow a heavy uh, scow back and forth. One of the small strands was broken. This was thought to be a small matter. Soon another was broken, and then another. Still, this was not so much of a consequence. One by one, more were broken. But unheeded, because each was so small, finally all were broken and the boat went adrift. A little care does not seem to be as much consequence, but the Bible says to be careful for nothing and to cast all your care upon him. Wow! Some have thought that this uh, bearing of burdens and cares made up a strong uh, in the Lord. Some have thought that the bearing of burdens, if we carried them by ourselves, and the cares and carry them by ourselves, would make us strong in the Lord. No, that's not so. It is the casting of them on Jesus that makes us strong. Putting your faith and your hope and your all of your being into Jesus makes them strong, makes us strong. For a man to be down under a heavy weight is no exercise to his muscles. But to be up on his feet and passing heavy weights on to another, this is exercise. To be down under burdens and cares is no exercise to the soul. But it's really death. The passing of the chaos on to Jesus is the exercise and the strength of spiritual powers if you only knew how much grace a little care destroys. If you're careful, which Paul said, be careful for nothing, but in all things, seek Jesus. Some have come to find themselves entirely without grace because they did not cast their cares on the Lord. We knew a sister whose baby was such a care that she couldn't keep, could not keep saved. And one day, when asked how she was getting along in the Lord, she answered, Not well. The baby is such a care and worry that I cannot keep the victory I should like to have. Was it not too bad to lay such a blame 
upon a poor little innocent child? I was asked one time if it was possible to reach an experience where we would never fret or worry. Certainly we can. We shall never get to a place where we shall have no temptation, but we can get to the place where we shall not yield to that temptation. Your life has not reached that degree of perfection that it should until you have attained to such experience. Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. When you are having any great anxieties about the future things, you are doing what Jesus tells you not to do, and you cannot do something he tells you not to do without suffering spiritual loss. Right here, my friend, I'm going to tell you a little something. That I've been there recently. I personally, myself, a man of God who believes that I trust in God with my whole heart can look back a couple days and say I had a failure and I'm going to confess it to the Lord and put it in His hands and have no more thought of it and leave it behind and let Him take care of it and He will, I'm sure. And the word is, oh, O, oh, big O and small H. O. Oh. Why would you worry about anything when Jesus says, be anxious for nothing? But you say, when there is no meat in the ladder and no flour in the bin, can we then be not anxious? There are those who have been in just such circumstances and yet have not been guilty <laughs> or greatly troubled. I can remember my father. I can remember Phipsburg, Maine. I'm probably 10 years old. No flour in the bin. No food in the cupboard. No job yet. I remember Daddy getting us around and we prayed. And I remember Daddy going to work. Came home bragging. I'm the highest paid floor sweeper in the whole United States probably. He was working in a shipyard and I called the Hyde Windlass in Bath, Maine, sweeping the floor and making a good salary. And to him it was like a million dollar thing. Because we didn't have a salary, we didn't have anything. After that, I can remember, I think it was Friday night. It was meat night. We'd have hamburger. Friday night would be meat night. We'd have hamburger. Who has been in just such circumstances and yet have not been greatly troubled? I can remember Daddy caught a little old coon. He threw it in the basement. And every time he'd get a little tidbit to throw to it, he'd throw it down there and the coon got fat. So he got ready to kill it one day and we was going to eat it. Well, Little did he know that coons are vicious as bears <laughs> when they get a little size to him and that coon beat him to half to death and, he, and ran away. If you will be over anxious about anything, you can never live close to God. When anxiety knocks at your door of your heart for admittance and you open the door and let them in, you are opening the door to a dangerous band of robbers. They are robbers of grace. They are robbers of peace. When anxiety steps over, the threshold in your heart's door, grace and peace flee away out the window. But what am I to do? 
size a careworn soul. Do just what a good man says he did. He said that he opened his heart and Jesus came in and he shut the door. Let Jesus keep the door of your heart when anxiety comes and went into your heart. Tell them they must get permission from Jesus because you had given your whole heart to him. This is what is meant by casting your care upon him. He says, cast your care on me. I will take care of you. It is not enough to kneel down and ask Jesus to take them. You must cast them on him. And this is the soul's needed ex excuse. The soul that will do this shall be strong. You must put the burden over on the Lord's shoulders. Let him bear it. He will bear all your burdens for you if you will lay them upon him. Do you know I've gone through times in life when I did that perfectly and everything came out perfect? There have been times in my life when I halfway did that and things didn't come out perfect. You must wholeheartedly do it. You must do it with belief that what God says He will perform. Not only must you put them upon Him, but you must let go entirely. You do not even need to look after them to see what He does with them. Your little child comes to you with a tangled cord. Gives it over to your hands. But holds one end. Now you know that in order to get it untangled, you must have both ends. Oh, weary one. Jesus will disentangle all the cares of your life. But you must let him have both ends. <laughs> he does not want your help. You hinder him if you attempt to help him. Cares will come. Things that are of a trying nature will assail us as long as we live. But we have a refuge in Jesus. He will bear our burdens. He will care for us. Us. Wow. Man, what reading this has been. What heart stirring. What rendering it has been for me to pump up my spiritual life of the last few days. Do you say, Brother Peter, if you look back at the last few days, have you been where you are right now? No, I haven't. Did you have some anxiety? Yes, I did. I had the promise, the literal promise of a sale, of a vehicle I had. The man even took it down and filled it up with high-test gas. And then vanished off the scene. <clears throat> and I was counting on that. Was I counting on God? No. I was counting on that sale. I still had the sale in front of me. But now I'm counting on God. If he wants it to sell, it'll sell. If he doesn't want to sell, he has another way that he's going to take care of everything. And all I have to do is rest in that. He's God. So he may change the way things are going. He would, That's his right. He's God. He can change it if he wants to. All I got to do is fall in there and follow him. And everything will be fine. I don't have to worry about it. I would love in my life that I have left to be able to enhance some of my children's lives. 
And in this day and age right now, a little finances would enhance some things in some of my children's lives. And that was is what I would like to do. And it would take uh, something extra uh, normal to do it. Or uh, extra unnormal. <laughs> God has a way of doing things unnormal to you and I, but that prosper us in the way He wants us to live. Now I'm in a, a page in front of me that says how to live a holy life. And I'm going to do that in the next excerpt. We'll see you then. We love you. Appreciate you being uh, uh, on PH Tidbits. And pray that God will give you some encouragement that you need in these days that are before us. We'll see you again next time. Right. Bye-bye.